What I would do is I would think about it this way. What did the company tell us when they reported earnings last week? They said that in emerging markets, but importantly not China, Brazil, Russia, India, and Turkey, they were seeing some incremental softness. And where does the 10R sit in Apple's portfolio of smartphones? It's the lowest price device at $749 entry price point compared to $999 and $1,099 for the 10S and the 10S Max. So this would be consistent with the challenges Apple's seeing in emerging markets, but importantly not China, and would suggest to us that they still haven't cracked the code on that value smartphone to penetrate or greater penetrate some of those existing markets. We've talked a lot, and it's a little bit wonky, Tom, so bear with me here. We've talked a lot about how the price of the phone may not matter as much because most people are buying it on a monthly basis. However, when you do that, as I think 80-plus percent of buyers now are, you get a monthly payment. Does that monthly payment actually hurt the replacement cycle? Because it's almost like a car. It's like, let me pay it off before I take on new debt to buy the next one. I don't think it does to the extent you see the wireless carriers offer promotions to really try to get you to upgrade. And, and that monthly payment, you know, we're seeing strong sales and accessories which are being sold on monthly payments as well. So net-net, I would say monthly payments are helping device sales for smartphones, especially Apple. Tom, how do you quantify the China risk when you're looking at Apple, whether it's potential disruption to the supply chain or as the trade war escalates come January 1st and beyond, if everything that comes out of China is subject to some kind of a tariff? How does that work into your model? See, that's an excellent question. And if you think about China, I still think it's the single biggest risk to Apple's shares. So first off, on revenue, about 20% of their sales come out of China. Uh, on a supply chain basis, though, a lot of their products are manufactured in China. Though we think that this emphasis on average selling price is incredibly important in today's tariff environment, given that it shows to us that Apple has pricing power. So in the event that you were to see the next round out of the administration a 10% tariff on everything, we think Apple's best positioned to withstand that to the extent they have pricing power and others may not. Why are people keeping their cell phones longer, and what does that imply for Apple? They're keeping them longer because some time ago you had a change to what we're talking about with essentially the uh, wireless carrier subsidizing the device to now the consumer paying for the device, which was key to the advent of those monthly payment plans we talked about before. So I think when you had that pivot from supplier subsidized to consumer paying for them, even on a monthly basis, I think that's led to consumers holding on to their phones longer.